Hello, and thank you for joining this HCP Live Geriatrics Peer Exchange titled Early Diagnosis, Testing, and Treatment of Dementia. Alzheimer's disease is an irreversible progressive brain disorder that slowly destroys memory and thinking skills and eventually the ability to carry out the simplest tasks. Simple symptoms of Alzheimer's disease for most people first appear in their mid-60s. There's currently no cure for Alzheimer's disease. However, timely detection, accurate diagnosis, and appropriate management can produce meaningful results for patients and families. And there are drugs in the clinical development pipeline that may be very promising. In this HCP Live Peer Exchange discussion, I'm joined by a panel of my colleagues, all experts in the fields of internal medicine and geriatrics, geriatric psychiatry, neurology, and neuropsychology. Together, we'll review the latest clinical trials and provide practical perspectives on approaching, evaluating, and managing the geriatric population affected by Alzheimer's disease in your clinical practice. I'm Dr. Ali Reza Atri, director of the Banner Sun Health Research Institute, Banner Health, Sun City, Arizona. Participating today on our distinguished panel are Dr. Mark Agronin, Senior Vice President for Behavioral Health at Miami Jewish Health in Miami, Florida. Dr. Bradford Dickerson, Director of the Frontotemporal Disorders Unit at Massachusetts General Hospital and Harvard Medical School in Boston, Massachusetts. Dr. Mary Norman, Medical Director at Highland Springs Erickson Living in Dallas, Texas. And Dr. Lynn Lely Shaughnessy, Director of Neuropsychology at the Cognitive Neurology Unit Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center and Harvard Medical School in Boston, Massachusetts. I'll pose the first question um, uh, to you, Mark. Uh, the prevalence of, of dementia due to Alzheimer's disease and related disorders is increasing. What are the numbers uh, and projections telling us? These statistics are, are really stunning when you look at them. Currently, worldwide, almost 50 million individuals are, are living with some form of dementia. Uh, 60 to 70 percent of these are, are cases of Alzheimer's disease. What's really concerning is that uh, every year about 10 million new cases are being added and so if you project into the next 30 years, this number is going to double and then triple. So we really are facing an epidemic uh, of dementia worldwide across the board and obviously with age being the number one risk factor, the, the number is, is increasing exponentially. If there's one glimmer of, of hope here, it's that uh, there have been a, several studies that have shown some age-specific uh, decreases in the prevalence of, of Alzheimer's disease in uh, the United States and in Europe. And, and this may suggest that uh, some of the healthy lifestyle issues that uh, we're discovering that we'll talk about today may, might be having an impact. But the bottom line is that the absolute number is increasing, and we absolutely have to, to pay close attention to this. Great. Thank you, Mark. So yes, that there are some uh, studies that are showing the, um, the incidence rates may be changing because of potentially some of the healthy habits we'll talk about uh, a little bit later. But as the, as the number of people uh, in this um, baby boomer generation is increasing in the U.S., we're going to have an increased prevalence. Uh, my, my next question I'll pose uh, to Brad. Brad, what causes Alzheimer's disease? Well, I think there are a number of theories. Some might be considered competing theories, but I think the prevailing idea is that uh, we have a process that leads to the uh, formation of amyloid plaques and uh, tau-related neurofibrillary tangles that lead to brain dysfunction and ultimately neurodegeneration and symptoms. Uh, the amyloid hypothesis proposes that there are uh, different pathways that process the amyloid precursor protein that seems to have important functions at the synapse and within neurons in the brain. And one pathway is really an unhealthy pathway that can lead to the generation of, uh, of uh, portions of the protein that can eventually aggregate. And initially, they may start to form so-called protofibrils that are soluble and still floating around, but may start to interfere with synaptic function. Eventually, they aggregate and become insoluble and form the amyloid plaques that we talk about when we talk about what you see under the microscope in a person with Alzheimer's. Somewhere along that process, uh, tau begins to hyperphosphorylate and form tangles within cells and eventually kill off the cell. Le it leads to dysfunction initially, but eventually it kills off the cell and leads to the neurofibrillary tangle that Professor Alzheimer also saw under the microscope more than a century ago. 
So as the tau really starts to take hold in the cells, and it may actually propagate from cell to cell, which is a hot new idea, it begins to lead to network dysfunction within the brain and, and, and hypometabolism that you can measure on PET scans that we'll talk about later. And um, dysfunction within the network is thought to be one of the real um, proximate um, um, markers of symptomatic onset. So I think the idea then is that the network is dysfunctional and then it starts to de degenerate. The neurons start to lose their processes that connect them with other neurons and eventually start to die off. And somewhere in that process, glial cells um, become uh, active and they start to get into the mix, possibly as an attempt to clear out some of the, of the pathologic um, uh, toxic um, species of these proteins. And uh, they may actually contribute to some of the damage, though, in that process. And, and they're thinking about neuroinflammation, as it's called, and also uh, so-called excitotoxicity, some of the uh, calcium uh, processing that can lead to the degeneration of brain cells. And, and it may be that some of these processes get set off in a way that um, are not specific to Alzheimer's pathophysiology, but might be common to other neurodegenerative diseases. And that might be uh, where there are opportunities to develop treatments that could intervene in the process of more than one neurodegenerative disease. But ultimately, all of these are a family of diseases that lead to brain cell loss and uh, the pathologies that we can see under the microscope and ultimately the irreversible degeneration of parts of the brain that control people's cognition and behavior. I think this is a very interesting idea about proteins and proteinopathies being causes of neurogenerative conditions and that, that other uh, mechanisms like neuroinflammation, even vascular dysfunction may be uh, at play. Um, so individuals who are older may have multiple things going on in the brain. Thank you for that, Brad.